halfway down is not half the speed. In fact, you'll see that the speed is larger halfway down. Larger than half, I should say. So let's take an example. Let's put a person at the top of this building, and this person's going to drop a ball. So the initial velocity is just zero. And the ball will drop straight down. And let's say that this person has two friends. One friend at the halfway point, and another friend at the bottom. Both of these friends have very good eyes, and they can get the velocity exactly. Now, the building is 180 meters. Let's calculate what the speed is at the bottom. And I'm going to make downward the positive direction for this problem. Well, we know, we know that the final speed v will equal the initial speed plus a t, the acceleration times time. So if we know the time it takes to go from here to there, then we can find out the uh, final speed. Well, we can find the time using our dis distance equation. So the change in position equals the initial speed times time plus one half a t squared. Great. Well, let's plug in the numbers. We know that this distance is 180 meters. And we know the initial speed is zero, and zero times anything is zero. <clears throat> so we just get equal to one half a. Well, what is the acceleration? It's the acceleration of gravity. Ten meters per second squared times t squared. And we can now solve this problem. One half times ten, well, that's just five meters per second squared, t squared. It's 180 meters here. And I will divide both sides by the 5 meters per second squared. These guys cancel. The meters cancel there. And 180 divided by 5 is equal to 36. Second squared, top of top. And that's equal to t squared. And now all I have to do is take the square root of both sides. And I get that t is equal to 6 seconds. So it'll take 6 seconds from, for this ball to come all the way down this distance of 180 meters. Plugging that in here, well, I get an initial velocity of 0 plus 10 meters per second squared times 6 seconds. These guys cancel. 10 times 6 is 60, so I get 60 meters per second. So, excellent. So this guy here, he says, hey, when the ball hits the ground, just before it hits the ground, it's going 60 meters per second. Well, you might naively think, I mean, this guy's halfway down. He should see 30 meters per second. But that's not what he sees. He sees a speed much larger than 30 meters per second. It's kind of interesting. And the reason is, is the ball starts off with zero velocity. Therefore, it, it spends more time in the first half because it's going slower in the first half than in the second half. So even though the distances are the same, the ball spends more time in the first half and therefore, has a larger, I should say, has a larger halfway speed than if they spent equal amounts of time. Let's see this with the numbers. Well, if I take the uh, halfway point, and I'll go a little quicker because it's the exact same calculation, but to find the time, well, you know, delta x is equal to uh, the initial velocity, which is zero because it starts off at zero, right? plus the one-half uh, a t squared, where this is the acceleration of gravity. So then plugging in, I get 90 meters equals one-half times 10 is 5 meters per second squared times t squared. And then again, I divide both sides by 5, I take the square root, and I get a time of about 4.2 seconds. 
Ah, it takes six seconds to come all the way down, but to get to the halfway point, it takes 4.2 seconds. It only takes a, one, a remaining 1.8 to go this distance, right? So it spends more time here, and therefore has a larger speed at the halfway point. And we can plug in the numbers just to show it. Equals the initial speed plus a t. Well, this is zero, the initial speed, right? So it's just 10 meters per second squared times 4.2 seconds. These guys cancel, and I get 42 meters per second. So this guy does not see half the speed. He sees much more than half the speed. 